What's up everyone? Alex here. I'll be perfectly honest. Sakura Wars is a series that I didn't expect to be talking about today. My history with it goes as far back as the Dreamcast era, when Sega was ramping up to the release of Sakura Wars 3, which was set entirely in Paris, one of my favorite cities to travel to in the world. While the setting set ablaze my interest in the series, I began researching intensely to find everything I could learn about it at the time. And the more I learned about the games, the more I started to hope against all hope that the series would be brought over to the West. After one Western release, a lengthy hiatus, and vocal support from fans for the franchise to return, Sakura Wars is finally back. And not only is it everything I ever dreamed it would be, but it's a fantastic trip back to a simpler time. This is Sakura Wars through and through, a memorable and nostalgic review, and a fitting Western reintroduction to one of Sega's most beloved franchises. Sakura Wars is a story-driven game with dating sim mechanics, interspersed with missions featuring real-time combat, and also serves as a soft reboot to the franchise. The game is set in an alternate reality 1940, where military pilots commandeer spirit-powered steampunk mechs, defending their nations against the threat of demonic invasion. This review code was provided by Sega and was played and captured on a PS4 Pro. In Sakura Wars, you play the role of Seijiro Kamiyama, a former Navy captain who's been assigned to lead the Imperial Combat Review's Flower Division. Upon arriving, he quickly realizes that what initially sounded like a straightforward transfer was going to be anything but. Not only is he tasked with improving the combat readiness and the morale of the division's team members, but he's also tasked with reversing the fortunes of the Imperial Combat Review's ailing theater business, which serves as both its primary income and a front for all its military operations. As interesting as the premise of the game sounds, I want to restate that Sakura Wars is a story-driven game. This basically means that while plenty of action sequences were featured in the many videos made about the game, it only showcases a fraction of the entire Sakura Wars experience. That said, the combat gameplay of Sakura Wars isn't difficult to learn at all. Each mech you pilot features different weapons and combos. Combos are typically executed by repeatedly pressing the circle button for your basic attacks, followed by a combo ender with triangle. You can also press R1 to dodge enemy attacks, and if you press it before an attack hits, you'll slow down time, rendering your team temporarily invincible to all attacks and allowing them to dish out tons of damage to your enemies. If you manage to fill up your spirit gauge by destroying enemies and absorbing crystals, you'll be able to unleash a super attack with Square that'll make defeating hordes of enemies and bosses very easy. All of this combat is tied together by Sakura Wars' morale system, which improves your AI teammates' performance based on how well you work its combat. The better you dodge and the more combos you link together, the more your morale will increase, inspiring your teammates to fight and defend better. Unlike most other action games with AI partners, you really don't need to take care of your teammates that much. They fight just as well as you, provided that you do the same yourself. Your mechs also feature a double jump of some sort with X to help with each level's light platforming sections, a dash with the R2 button so you can burst through long corridors, and the ability to switch between different teammates with L1 to spice up your combat experience. There are no difficulty settings for Sakura Wars combat, so if you're going in hoping that you can make things more challenging for you, I'm sad to report that this is not that game. The gameplay was tuned to be more forgiving, so that all sorts of players can jump right in. Each of the game's levels are designed well from a gameplay standpoint, throwing in a generous variety of enemies at you, reinforcing the developer's focus on providing a visceral but approachable combat experience for all. Other than that, I did find it a bit challenging to hit some of the game's flying enemies early on, often coming up short when trying to use my basic jumping attacks. Eventually, I found a mech that made it easy to deal with these flying creatures, but I'm hoping that the upcoming update, which will feature target locking, will help with this. With a heavy emphasis on story, does that mean that there's not a lot of action sequences you can play? That's not exactly true. On occasion, the city might get raided by demons, which forces you to participate in a small skirmish in front of your base of operations. Later in the game, you'll be able to unlock the Combat Battler, 
which allows you to not only replay older missions to improve your score, but to also try the same missions with different pilots, which improves your teammates' spirit power as a result. Spirit power is the element that binds the game's combat with its story and dating sim mechanics. Simply put, Spirit Power describes the individual power of your party members, used in lieu of a traditional numerical level that can be found in other RPG-style games. This concept has been present since the very first Sakura Wars, and although some of you might think that this could have been a challenging way to balance the series' difficulty, its battles were designed to reward strategic gameplay from the start, with each member's spirit making the battles easier the higher it was. The same is true with this Sakura Wars, as trying to mash through battles will only get you so far. In between story sequences, you'll be able to check in on your team's status in a rudimentary stage that shows your relative progress in terms of their relationship with you, and while players who love min-maxing stats might find this abstraction frustrating, I find that it's fitting, given the lengths the developers have tried to obscure some of its systems, so you're only focused on experiencing its story and its characters. This kind of forced approach wouldn't have worked had Sakura Wars story and characters not pulled me in. But as I write this review, all I can think about is wanting to replay the game to re-experience its characters and story all over again. The wordplay involving the Imperial Combat Review's cover as a theater troupe, with their true purpose to engage in various theaters of war, is not lost on me after all these years, and it's a concept that I've always felt was fresh, bringing me back to a time where robots and live-action Sentai shows were commonplace, with some even featuring its cast singing their show's theme. When I think about the overall concept of Sakura Wars as a series, I think it makes a lot of sense. After all, Sakura Wars' combat missions are all preceded by story sections that build up towards it, not so dissimilar to shows like Power Rangers or, my personal favorite, Voltus V. I recalled that I considered Sakura Wars as an all-female version of these shows during my youth, which is what made the games appeal to me even more. To drive this idea even further, each set of story sequences and battles are structured much like episodes of a TV show, complete with previews for the next chapter, along with intermissions where you're also allowed to save your progress. Saving at any time is not a feature available to me during my review but it is one of the features being added to the game in a future update. When this becomes available though, I encourage you not to save scum to try and optimize your responses to the game's many dialogue options. I've personally messed up more than a few times when trying to respond to each of my teammates' inquiries, but that didn't make building up their spirit impossible. These seemingly incorrect dialogue options led to some interesting and funny responses from each team member, which further reinforces the kinds of personalities that each character conveys. Despite that, I maxed out everyone's spirit by the end of the game, and had experienced all of my teammates' backstories. Throughout both the story and individual interactions with each of the Flower Division's members, you'll find that the best dialogue choices are often the ones that will appeal to the character you're speaking to and what might sound correct in the moment might not actually be the right choice. Once you've built up enough of a character's spirit, you might encounter opportunities that will allow you to get to know them in a more intimate way. These moments are usually times when you're trying to advance the conversation either by interacting with the environment or noticing some things on the other person, so it's understandable if you might accidentally get a bit handsy in the beginning. All told, these moments never bowl over to anything sexual, keeping with the series' tradition, and what you come away with is often a deep understanding and an appreciation for said character. Oh, and lots of spirit power, of course. The only thing that pulled me away from the story was the harshness of the first act of the game, which betrays the bright and vibrant nature that its visuals welcomed you with. This first arc sticks out like a sore thumb, making you question the nature of various alliances to the point where it felt as though one scene seemingly portrayed bullying as an acceptable expression of competitiveness. Vaguely speaking, the conclusion to this arc felt great because of this, but it's made that part of the story memorable for the wrong reason. Outside of that, the lack of English voice acting is really evident when trying to absorb team chatter during combat. During those moments, I'm more focused on trying to defeat enemies on the field, and there have been many times when I'd completely miss dialogue because of this. 
In addition, not all of Sakura Wars is voiced, and you're often left with the game's soundtrack and its clever camera switches doing the heavy lifting to carry the game's dialogue. These criticisms by no means negatively impacted my experience, but I hope that they could be addressed for future games. The decision to set Sakura Wars as not only a follow-up to a previous game, but also as a soft reboot is an interesting one, with this latest game set in 1940, thus expanding the series' fictionalized Taisho-era timeline. The Taisho era was a time when Japan enjoyed an unprecedented level of prosperity, Dubbed the Taisho Democracy, this optimistic and romantic mindset appealed to Oji Hiroi, the series' creator, because it represented a kind of Japanese idealism that was lost in World War II. The Taisho Democracy is a prevalent theme throughout the entirety of the Sakura Wars series, with its characters depicting the same kind of optimism and romance that the era itself exemplified. This behavior evoked an unwavering attitude that, Despite technology quickly shaping the world around us, making things more complicated as a result, at the very core, being a nice person, treating each other fairly, and helping each other out are of paramount importance. And this brand new Sakura Wars certainly has its share of help from a bunch of talented individuals. Bleach's Tite Kubo designed Sakura Wars' primary cast of characters, with Persona's Shigenori Sojima, Sword Art Online's Bun Bun, Pokemon's Ken Sugimori, Kaon's Yukiko Horiguchi, Girls and Panzer's Fumikane Shimada, and Haruhi Suzumiya's Noisy Ito providing designs for the game's supporting cast. Composer Kohei Tanaka of One Piece fame returns to score the series, and his history with it spans as far back as the first game, widely considered as his first big break in video game composition. For the technical side of things, the Sonic team provided their Hedgehog Engine 2, used in both Sonic Forces and the Mario and Sonic 2020 Olympics game, as the technical foundation for the new Sakura Wars. Even RGG Studios chipped in, assisting the Sakura Wars team in developing its many cutscenes. Fans of the series within Sega were invited to critique the new game to ensure that it met the expectations of fans all over. As you can imagine by hearing all this, a lot of love and care was put into Sakura Wars, and nothing exemplifies this more than the times you engage with its story and characters. What's amazing about all these artists contributing to Sakura Wars is that the game showcases their characters in such a way that, unless you have a good eye or are really looking for certain artist styles, you'd be hard pressed to tell a sudden shift in style. It's this uniform way of rendering its characters in relation to its environment that Sakura Wars strikes a perfect balance of breathing life into what is ostensibly a 3D rendered anime. A lot of care has also been taken to animate each character in such a way that their motions are representative of their personalities, helping draw players further into the game's world. On top of that, the characters in Sakura Wars are some of the most expressive I've seen in a game of this type in a long while, with some eye animations that help sell the expressions of each character. I found myself quite often staring into some of the characters' eyes, never wanting to miss how their face would react to surprise or any other emotion that would incite a change in behavior. When you see how each character reacts for the first time, you can't help but be impressed and be reminded that this is all happening in real time. Tie all this impressive animation and expression with a steampunk theme, and it's a combination that speaks to my inner design nerd, with every single piece of user interface reflecting the aesthetic, framing the emotional scenes and action that Sakura Wars constantly delivers. At the time of this review, I wasn't able to play the game with the upcoming update, which adds a lock-on button, the ability to select from different configurations, the ability to save anywhere during story sections, a chat log, the ability to skip cutscenes during your first playthrough, and a brand new mech for Sakura that's designed for the anime sequel that's currently airing. While these are incredible quality of life improvements, I didn't feel that my experience was compromised by the absence of these features. I will however say that the default camera rotations for both story and combat modes were a bit too slow for my liking, so I recommend setting both to 4. I think it strikes the right balance. It wasn't that long ago that Sega declared that it would start looking into its own back catalog and seek to revive some of their most important franchises, 
And with Sakura Wars finally returning in the West, I can confidently say that their latest performance is a smashing success. All this was accomplished despite changing the series' genre, which is a challenge shared by other franchises such as Final Fantasy. However, much like said series, Sakura Wars wasn't only about its battles. These merely served as a backdrop to the drama and the developing story of the Imperial Combat Review, after all. At the end of the day, Sakura Wars is the story of overcoming adversity, tackling the different challenges that each day brings forth, and how an unlikely band of heroines dug deep within themselves to become the most skilled mech pilots of the era. And anyone wanting to join the Flower Division on this adventure will find much to enjoy, love, and reminisce.